Huawei's plans to open a 400 million pound R&D center near Cambridge University runs into U.S. opposition. But why is the U.S. commenting a British local decision? And as infection continue to rise, the race is on around the world for the first COVID-19 vaccine. Is this good news or are we moving too fast to guarantee safety? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. Chinese tech company Huawei's plan for a 400 million pound research facility site in the UK has reportedly sparked anger from the United States. The project would create 350 new full-time jobs and is located in a village near Cambridge University. But as the village is slated to vote on the plan this Thursday, a senior US official has urged the UK to put quote, aggressive tactics of the Chinese Communist Party, unquote, in perspective. The village council vowed to make a decision based entirely on consideration of the center's planning merits, such as whether villagers can still work, walk their dogs in peace and quiet. So what's at stake for Huawei? Why is the U.S. putting pressure on a U.K. village over an R&D center? How far is too far? I'm joined from... Adelaide, Australia, on the line um, via Skype by Simon Lacey, former vice president at Huawei Technologies and now senior lecturer at the University of Adelaide and from Beijing current affairs commentator, Aina Tangan. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. So a little bit of uh, background information. So Huawei bought this 550-acre uh, plot in 2018, and last summer the company submitted a plan application to the local village. Residents were not happy then about access to green space, cycle lanes, and the short time they were given to consider the plan. So Huawei resubmitted the plans this January, reportedly addressing a number of local residents' main concerns about the development. So Simon, first and foremost, how important is this new site to Huawei? What will be the consideration for Huawei to build such a center in the UK and near the Cambridge University? Right, well, I think, you know, you have to look back and, and see that Huawei has um, long-standing cooperation with the University of Cambridge already, and this just builds on those efforts. But actually, the question is not how important this site is to Huawei, but actually how important this site is to the UK. You have to remember, before Brexit, the UK was the number one destination for all inbound FDI in digital, in the digital economy and in technology for R&D. Uh, in fact, had more, um, had more inbound FDI than the rest of Europe combined. That was before Brexit. Now, um, a lot of that, that R&D FDI is going to Germany, and, and the UK actually wants to prove that it's still open for business and that it can still attract um, R&D from, from the world's most innovative companies. Mm -hmm. So I think the question is really how important this is to the UK. Right. Well, from Huawei's perspective, we know that Huawei has R&D centers all over the world. What is their approach by building these joint research facilities? Um, is there anything potentially sinister behind this approach? Like, you know, some people have been questioning. No, look, I mean, you're right that Huawei builds these R&D centers all over the world and, and actually its first overseas R&D center was, was in India. And, and these things really just track existing ecosystems and, and particularly um, the, the deep pools of, of skills and, and talent in the sector. And, and so um, the reason this would have been chosen is because there would have been expertise, expertise locally uh, affiliated with the University of Cambridge that, that made this site particularly um, well endowed in terms of, of labour, in terms of skills, in terms of talent uh, for this kind of research. Hmm. Well, according to the Times uh, article published on Tuesday, Keith Cratch, 
uh, U.S. Undersecretary for Economic Growth, Energy and Environment accused Huawei of being an extension of the Chinese government, although this is a private company, and urged the U.K. to put the whole thing in perspective. Aggressive tactics of the Chinese Communist Party, because it all starts from there, quote-unquote. He also told the newspaper, they, meaning Huawei, are after the people and technology. They want to co-op the researchers and talent from one of the most prestigious universities. Uh, Aina, when you hear this, what is this, what is he trying to say? Uh, what is the U.S. administration trying to do here? Well, uh, they've taken the war to, uh, not only inside the United States against Huawei, but they're pressing it around the world. I mean, last August, you'll remember, they they blacklisted 11 uh, uh, Huawei uh, companies and uh, a whole 36, over 36 affiliates. Uh, this is part of this kind of all pressure campaign, but at this point, it's just uh, uh, some an issue that can be raised to cause outrage, uh, to make it look like China is somehow seizing the advantage against the United States. This plays into what Donald Trump is trying to do in terms of his reelection campaign, which uh, the O'Donnell and Associates uh, plan, as they put it out, don't defend the U.S., just attack China. But Simon, uh, do you see any point of um, um, being some kind of element of truth or element of legitimacy in the U.S. concern? Uh, it's not just um, restricting its own companies from doing business to Huawei, but it's also asserting pressure to this village, to, to its allies across the Atlantic uh, over the setting up of this R&D center. Does it mean that the U.S. government would do everything it can to prevent Huawei from developing further relations with its allies or everything and anything, basically? Yeah, I mean, you have to understand that the UK is sort of a key domino in um, the US's strategy to really block uh, Huawei and especially its rollout of, of 5G. So um, last year when, when the UK had its infrastructure uh, review, which was a very evidence-based, very objective, very transparent process, um, which, which culminated in a decision saying there was, no, um, there was no reason to preclude Huawei from the market. Everyone was watching that decision very closely, including uh, in Canada and, in, and, in, and the other five eyes. And, and so um, the UK was, uh, was really, um, or is pivotal in, in, in the US's battle against Huawei. So they'll, they'll, the US and the Trump administration in particular will, will do anything to, um, to sort of poison uh, matters further and to convey this very negative uh, narrative uh, surrounding Huawei. Mm. On Tuesday, the uh, UK government agreed to allow Huawei to play a role in the development of non-core areas of UK's future 5G network, despite US officials' warning. Uh, and uh, so where would such a R&D center fall in terms of uh, government policy? Does such a center breach any regulatory limit or policy limits? Simon, once again to you, because this is more technical. Look, I think this, this decision really doesn't have that much to do with the Johnson government so much as it's really uh, a, a decision for the local council, as you, as you uh, highlighted at the beginning. And, and generally, you know, local councils are very enthusiastic about this sort of uh, a centre because of the jobs that it brings, all kinds of positive economic spillover effects, has a, has a, a positive effect on local property values, local tax base, local economy. Um, so, so these, these sort of things are usually um, very much welcomed by, um, by the local uh, government. I think in, in terms of you know, where this fits into the overall um, decision on 5G, look, that's, that's really anybody's guess now. As I said, last year we had this very objective, transparent, evidence-based review, um, and now it's really just a political fight um, between very hardcore reactionary right-wing elements of the Conservative Party uh, and, and more moderate elements uh, such as Boris Johnson. Uh, and it's really all about um, how Boris Johnson holds onto power and how this question of, of how to deal with Huawei fits into that equation. 
Yeah, um, Aina, how do you look at the position in, of the UK government, although they are not here to sway the decision of this village, and yet uh, it seems to be in a very precarious situation at this moment because uh, the UK does need Huawei, the UK does need 5G, and yet it is under extreme pressure from the United States. Now that the United States, since the middle of May, have put extra restriction on access to products and technology from the United States, to Huawei, what kind of position do you think the UK government is standing at this moment? The UK government is facing a disaster. Their economy is in deep reverse. Uh, unemployment is going to be a problem going on, and we haven't even talked about a hard Brexit. Uh, jobs are scarce and hard to come by, so there's no way that the British government is going to uh, even exert any pressure on this, and they couldn't. I, I chaired a, a zoning committee with, with this kind of... Uh, subject would come up and I can tell you we, we didn't really care what the state or the federal government said. We were interested in what the uh, local impacts were going to be, as they said, dog walking, things like this. So at this point, uh, Britain is in a tough position. They want to continue trade with China. They know that uh, any attempt to attack uh, Huawei directly would be a lightning rod and for reaction by Beijing. So they're treading carefully. Mm -hmm. Now, South Cambridgeshire District Council, the local uh, village council, has vowed to determine the Chinese company's application based entirely on consideration of its planning merits. And it's been reported that uh, it seems that uh, the council is likely to say yes to the plan. Um, so, Simon, the local concerns were really for the side access to green space cycle lanes, as I said, or traffic issues when the area uh, gets busy. Do you foresee a rational decision being made. If not, what would it be? What kind of impact will it have on the operations of Huawei? Yeah, look, I, I, can, I, I can foresee that a rational decision will, will be, be made. Look, I mean, there was, there was a lot of press reports um, about this last year when they, when they, um, when they opened the, the planning to the, to the public and, and actually there, there were some quite positive comments made at that time about um, the, the impact that this would have on the local economy, which, which would be positive. Um, in, in terms of how this affects Huawei, look, um, Huawei has had to reposition uh, a lot of its um, R&D uh, globally recently. So there was a uh, research centre in Santa Clara um, basically had to, had to shut down because they lost uh, an export license um, for, for some of the code that they were doing. That, that basically moved to Germany or they can, they can relocate R&D to Israel, um, uh, India. I mean, there the, the Nordics. I mean, there are R&D centers in, in Sweden, in, in Finland. You know, anywhere where you have an existing uh, technological um, ecosystem, uh, you're, you're going to find this talent, right? And so the, the options available to Huawei are, of course, um, many more than the options available to, to the UK government to attract uh, this sort of R&D from, from really some of the, the world's um, uh, most innovative and, and biggest um, technology firms. Mm -hmm. Aina, is the United States going to chase Huawei to the end of the world? Uh, in terms of where it can establish itself, where it can find researchers and technology. Because if the UK doesn't house this uh, R&D centre, as Simon says, somewhere else probably, someone else would be very happy to have it. So um, what is the US trying to, what is the rationale behind the US's strategy here? Well, this is Donald Trump at his best. Uh, he's a, the playground bully. He wants to show China he can take down their star pupil. Uh, and, you know, and what is this really about? It's about the fact that Huawei has been successful in areas that the United States is still trying two years behind. Uh, Huawei is going to spend $20 billion on research and development this year. They spent uh, over $18 billion last year. You compare that with Intel, which is at 12, Apple at 11. The only one that was larger was Amazon at 22. So this is really what it is. It's a competitive race. Uh, the U.S., instead of saying, let's compete and get ahead, as they did during Sputnik, is re basically saying, let's trip up the competition and take advantage of it. Okay, let's uh, leave the decision to the local village council and see what they comes up with. Uh, many thanks to Simon Lacey and Ina Tangen.